do a little bit of math today. Here I'm in my math classroom. I just wrote up a question that I think would be great for a lot of people watching. This question seems so easy. Most people tell me the answer is one and they're absolutely correct. But don't you know, there's actually two other answers. It's a degree three. And there's a little known rule that if it's degree three, there's three roots. There's three solutions to this equation. So let's explore the other two. They're complex in nature. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. There's different ways to do this question. I'm gonna do the way that is so high school, okay? A total high school way to do it. I'm gonna take the, the one and I'm gonna move it over to the left-hand side and write it like that, okay? You're gonna see why in a second. Now, I know that one of the answers is one. So what it means is I could work backwards. So if one of the answers is one, that means that x minus one has to be a factor. And what that also means is that to create this cubic, x cubed minus one, I've got this linear factor multiplied by this other factor, a quadratic, because a linear times a quadratic gives me a cubic. So plus bx plus c equals zero. So all I'm doing here is I'm rewriting this equation to look like this, um, and then working backwards to see if I can deduce what b and c would have to be, okay? So I'm gonna expand this out. So if I expand it out, I'm gonna bring the x through first. So x is gonna come through in each of the terms, and then I'm gonna bring the negative one through, do you see? Um, so that's gonna give me x cubed plus bx squared plus cx, and now bring the negative one through, it's gonna change all the signs. Here we go, we're having a lot of fun here. It's pretty easy so far. Most high school students can do this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna equate the exponents. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna group my like terms. So this squared term can go with this squared term, do you see? And this linear term can be grouped with this linear term. So x cubed plus will be uh, minus one is b minus one in brackets, x squared, just bringing those two terms together. And then c minus b, well that's plus c minus b x, bringing those ter two terms together. And I've got a minus c as my constant number. And don't forget, this original could have been written, this is the same thing as one x cubed plus zero x squared plus zero x minus one equals zero. So what I'm gonna now do is sort of do a comparison between this original e equation and this one that I've derived by assuming that a linear times a quadratic gives me a cubic. Okay, well we're doing pretty good here because look, the one here, uh, the coefficient on the x cubed has to be the same as that because they're the same equation. That also means that this coefficient has to be the same as that coefficient. So that allows me to deduce that b minus one is equal to zero. Well, hey, b is equal to one. Keep going. That means that this coefficient has to be the same as that coefficient. So c minus b has to equal zero. We already know what b is, it's one. So that's c minus one equals zero, or c is equal to one. I could have also deduced that c is one using the constant term as well. Well, why is that important? Well, look, I can come back to the blue equation here and I can put my values in one and one. Well, this is a quadratic equation. So don't forget what this allows us to do. It allows us to take two numbers that are being times together. So a times b equals zero. I'm just letting this be the a and this the b because I want that deduction. That means what? That tells us that either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero, do you see? So I'm gonna use the same deduction here, either x minus one, x minus one is equal to zero, or, well, this quadratic that's now been set, right? We know what b and c are. Or x squared plus bx plus, sorry, one x, one x, I worked hard for that, plus one equals zero. Okay, so those are the two equations to solve. Well, this one here is just one. I knew that was what it was, okay? But this is gonna give me degree two, it's gonna give me the other two equations, uh, the other two answers. So I'm gonna use the quadratic formula here, which is, well, you know what it is, negative b, so this is your a, and this is your b, and this is your c. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, so one squared is one, minus four, times a, which is one, times c, which is one, all over two times a, which is two times one or two. Okay, this is really cool. Now watch what happens here. 
look the number under the radical. It's actually going to be negative. So this is where we get into this idea of complexity to numbers. So the idea here is, is that we use the idea that the square root of negative 1, which seems like it doesn't have an answer, we let it equal i. Okay, so we use this idea. It's a new number. We can talk more about it in future videos, but just take that as a direct substitution. This allows me to then say negative 1 plus or minus the square root. Well, 1 minus 4 times 1 times 1 is negative 3. So that's going to be negative 1 times 3. Notice I separated the sign from the number. I chop it right here. The square root of negative 1 is now i, just using this substitution. So that's going to be negative 1 plus or minus i, and the square root of 3 is the square root of 3, all over 2. Well, that's interesting because those are two answers, but the only thing that's maybe new to you is this number i. And the number i is a number. It's an actual number. So we get our, two, we get our other two answers, okay? So let's write the, the, the three of them and just talk about them for a second. The first one is 1. That's just the real number 1. You know what that is. The next one is going to be negative 1 plus i root 3, or root 3 i, doesn't matter, all divided by 2. And then the third one is negative 1 minus. I'm going to take the negative case, i times root 3, all divided by 2. Well, these are worth talking quickly about. Um, we can get into this more in another video. I can also write this as negative 1 over 2 plus root 3 over 2i. OK? And then this other one can be written as negative 1 over 2 minus root 3 over 2i, just writing it slightly differently. And this could be your first introduction to complex numbers, where the first number here is the real number. Same with this one. Those are real numbers, just like you would see on the x-axis. And then this number here, this number here, those are the imaginary parts. So this negative a half has some complexity to it. Think of it that way. Um, and so you see you get your three answers. Um, graphically, so any real number answer is going to be on the x-axis. We call that the real solution. So that can be located right here at 1. Do you see? The answer is 1. Now these two, however, these two can be found off of the x-axis. So this means I go half to the left and up root 3 over 2. And then this one, I go half to the left and down root 3 over 2. So there's your three answers. Notice that one of them is on the x-axis. The x-axis is the real line. These two hover off of the x-axis. So their real part is negative a half, but they hover above and below the x-axis. And so this axis here is not the y-axis. Be careful. This is called the complex axis. So every real number has a, comp has a set of complex components to it. So three answers. And uh, there you go. One's real and two are complex or imaginary. If you like the video, slap a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you think this might appeal to people, uh, want to learn more about complex numbers, share it. And I'll see you back here in the next video.